One, two. I did it. Ah, that was the third time. What's up, Flick fans? Zoe Kravitz directorial debut and uh, Channing Tatum, who's having a good year. Let's talk Blink Twice. Okay, here we go. Jazz, Frida, this is my childhood buddy, Cody. Vic, my left and right hand man. When tech billionaire Slater King meets cocktail waitress Frida at this fundraising gala, he invites her to join him and his friends on a dream vacation on his private island. That sounds safe. As strange things begin to happen, Frida questions her reality. This film is rated R. You also have Christian Slater, Simon Rex, Haley Joel Osment, Adria Arjona. Oh my God, the cast is incredible. But uh, the two that we're focused on here... Channing Tatum. Ooh, I'm about to make a name for myself here. And Naomi Aki, and they are so good in this film. Now, Naomi has a couple of moments where you get to feel the emotional side of her performance, especially as we get further into the plot and we start to realize what's actually going on here because throughout the first half, they're on this island, they're going through some things, doing some stuff, partying hard, having some fun. We're having fun while watching because of the interactions. But the whole time we're questioning ourselves, what is the point? What's going on here? Are they safe? What's going on? <laughs> I am so confused. So you know something's coming, right? But it feels more like we're just experiencing what it would be like to be super rich and have access to all the drugs and occasionally see a sketchy thing happen, ask a question. But you know what? We have money, so who cares? Well, we don't have money. They have money. So who cares? But Naomi is fantastic. Now, Channing Tatum, really good. There is a monologue at the end of the film, in the third act, that he has that genuinely showcases how good he is. His ability to deliver that emotionally is awesome. Now, there is a moment within that moment that I believe people are going to take from and uh, turn into a meme of sorts. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of that Eddie Redmayne moment a couple of years ago. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. He gets one of those. That performance may be skewed from that scene, but he's really good, man. That said, there is a lot to his character that we don't really know in the beginning. And honestly, as we're figuring it out through the film, and you could say the same thing about all of the people on the island and how they're each individually handling this situation, some being more subtle than others, and then a lot of them are just kind of oblivious to the entire thing. Yeah, we're going to go to this island with some rich people. All the guys seem cool. Christian Slater's cool. Simon Rex is great, my fellow Vineman, Vine creator. We had mutual friends. Never met him, though. So I classify this as a psychological thriller, as a dark comedy of sorts. It reminds me heavily, and everyone's going to make this comparison, and it's probably the most obvious comparison. Austin, what are you even doing? Who cares? It reminds me of a, a mixture of Get Out, and then my co-host, Ryan Snelling, who was at the screening with me, said a little bit of The Menu. And some people didn't like the menu because it was a little too on the nose with its themes. And I do believe that occasionally happens with Blink Twice in the end. But once you realize what's actually going on here, it gets a lot more interesting at that point. And the uncovering of this thing that I'm being extremely generic about because I'm tiptoeing around spoilers is fascinating, but a little up and down because it was up and down. It doesn't quite come together at the end to make for a great get out level or even the menu level experience, but I really loved the attempt. Let's talk about Zoe Kravitz. And we're gonna pivot off the plot for a second. Zoe Kravitz said she wanted to use sound design and the off, the, the strange nature of the filmmaking here to enhance the experience, to make you feel uncomfortable, but also make it feel like a stylistic and creative film. And so say what you will about the ideas coming together and everything uh, fully realizing at the end, we'll discuss, but as a, a piece of art, I believe this is an expertly directed film from Zoe Kravitz, and it's her first one. That's really impressive, man. This is like something you put on a resume as a first-time director, and anyone who sees it goes, yeah, you've got it. You've got it. And again, we know the artistic lineage is there. We know Zoe Kravitz can act, but I also believe she can direct. She directs the absolute hell your profanity? out of this film. 
just really good overall. Visually, artistically, the shot selection. I mean, the cinematography is fine, but the shot selection, where the camera's placed, where it is filmed at an uncomfortable angle. I just thought all of that was utilized well because while everything's happy and cheery and wonderful and comedic and uh, whatever at the beginning, you start to get into the psychological thriller side of things. It goes from a comedy to a dark comedy, but all of those seeds are planted at the beginning of the movie throughout the first act, just because of the way it's filmed, put together, and the sound design is utilized, all of that is great. And so this is a cinematic experience that I would say, watch in the theater, even if I don't know if you're going to love the outcome, it's worth watching. But pivoting back to once we start getting the resolution to this buildup, which is essentially when it gets way more interesting, even though I was enjoying the first act, you start to put the puzzle pieces together and how each girl is handling being in this situation. And there's actually a warning for this film. There was outside of my door going into the theater that you see some, you see some messed up things in this film. It's tragedy at its core. And these aren't just movie things. These are things that happen in real life. And the fact that Zoe Kravitz was willing to take that on, I believe, is a good thing. Now, what she has to say about it overall is obviously an important thing. But what happens in that third act, it left me asking questions about what this moment and this scene and this resolution what it was actually trying to say and what it meant. And so while it's thrilling in its entirety, and I'm absolutely on the same page as Kravitz for what she's trying to say, uh, the way it is said in this film left me asking a question or two, like, what exactly did you mean by that? I wish it would have been a little less complicated. And again, it's not even a complicated subject. It's very easy to root for the characters we're supposed to root for. And they give a lot to Channing Tatum's character that really builds him up, makes him well-rounded. But still, you know, you're asking those questions. Uh, but there were also some things where I'm like, oh, how does that make sense? There's one reveal. I'll say this in the third act. And Austin, that's a spoiler. A reveal. Come on, every movie has a reveal. But there's a reveal that I'm like, ah, I don't know if that makes a ton of sense. I, I don't know. They didn't give us enough with that for my brain to process it and say that was worth including. Maybe if they wouldn't have even included that, I would have been better off with it. And then how it actually wraps up, which I enjoyed, but I'm also questioning how all of those things connect and I would have liked a little bit more there. If you just give me a little more as to how that happened the first time, then I wouldn't be asking all these questions. If you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, then you're probably just like, Austin, get on with it, man. Why are you still talking? I'm sorry. Move along. Move along. Final thoughts. It's hard to do this without spoiling things. We're going to do that on the Movie Mode podcast, and I'm going to get to talk about what does and doesn't fully connect at the end. Uh, but even though those things do not fully connect, and uh, you could say it goes off the rails on occasion, it always manages to reel itself back in. It's super entertaining. The cast is amazing, and technically... It's an awesome movie. And so overall, I'm happy I saw this on the big screen. I love this attempt by Kravitz, and I'm excited to see what she does next. Before I give my score, leave your thoughts down below. It, are we living in the, the Tatum sauce? The Channing sauce? Ooh, I'm about to make a name for myself here. That doesn't sound as good as the McConaissance. We'll say Channing sauce. Leave your likes. If you enjoyed this video, you know. Blink Twice is a psychological thriller that hits on some dark and emotional aspects of the world we live in, but creatively weaves these ideas together to make something entertaining and unexpected. Expected. While everything doesn't fully connect by the time the credits hit, the attempt is one to admire as Kravitz creates a fantastic product from a technical standpoint and from a story standpoint, still really intriguing. So let me know what you think of Blink Twice down below. This one was surprising because I didn't know what I was in for. Uh, do you like Channing Tatum holding that camera? Because I feel like my wife would love that. I'm afraid for her to see this because he's a good looking guy. All right, see you soon.